Listen, who's, whoever is doing Tiffany's hair in this show, you must hate her. You must despise her with a passion. Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. I'm doing another review for Insecure episode four of season four, okay? I know I didn't do a review for episode three, but that was for good reason, okay? So just let me, just let it go. So in this episode, Issa is seen dropping the ball on her real job of being a property manager because she's been spending so much time with this block party and she's kind of allowing a lot of the rest of her relationships to kind of go to the side. Her relationship with her romantic relationship, her friendship, and her job. I get it because Issa, this block party is Issa's passion and this is something that she's really into right now. So I can get how she can be so tunnel vision to what she's trying to accomplish. But at the same time, she's being extremely oblivious to everything else that's going on around her. Her residents are knocking at her door saying they don't got no water. That's a problem. If I'm living somewhere and my water's not working, I'm gonna turn that landlord up or whoever is responsible for making sure that I'm supposed to have water in my apartment. Like that's unacceptable, Issa. One of one of Issa's residents did bring up a good point with, a, with the whole water situation. He was just like, this is what's going on in Flint, Michigan right now. And I think this show does, I think Insecure does a really good job in bringing real life issues um, to the screen for people to kind of visualize and feel from people who they are familiar with and people who they know. Like, even how they touch on the topic of maternal mortality rate, how black women are more susceptible to dying after childbirth. And that's a real thing because doctors aren't taking some of their um, concerns seriously. So I love how Insecure brings up different like real topics for us to see on screen and for it to be like something that, hey, we know this is going on and we're gonna talk about it. We're gonna talk about it and we're gonna keep shedding light on it. So I appreciate that, Insecure. Good job. I think I think this is the episode where everybody is just big mad. Like everybody, everybody is mad. Everybody is irritated at somebody in some way, shape or form. Condola not replying to none of the texts. You're being left on red. You're not being left with a reply, you've been left on red. Condola is big mad, okay? She's not a little mad, she's not medium, medium mad. Condola is a big mad. Because she's not replying to Issa's text about this block party and making sure everything is going okay. And why may that be? Why may Condola be big mad? It, 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 the only thing that has to do with it is Lawrence. He is literally the reason probably why she's not texting Issa back after that conversation they had in her kitchen. I feel bad for Issa cause, cause Issa really was like really trying with Condola and I don't know, I just feel, I just, I just feel bad for Issa right there because it's just like, that's not even her fault. That wasn't even like her orchestrating that whole thing to happen. It was literally just a, a series of unfortunate events. Like She may be overwhelmed, I don't know. Maybe, have you ever played a block party? I feel like it would be hard. I think one of the main things in this episode would be communication. And communication has really been a real barrier between Issa and Molly. You kind of wonder why that is the case and they're best friends and they know each other and they talk about everything else under the sun. But why is it so hard for them to have the conversation about one another? For instance, when Molly and Issa are pulling up to Tiffany's house, which is a really nice house, it's very cute. I really like Tiffany's house. Like it was really cute, nicely decorated. I don't know, I just liked it. When Issa and Molly are pulling up to her house, they're fighting over this parking spot. And I think that scene symbolizes how they just have been butting heads. They just been butting heads and the communication is not clear. She said, oh, I'm going. And Issa thinks that Molly's gonna go off, but Molly thinks Issa says she's going by like pulling off and that's not even what was communicated. They don't listen to each other. Listen to each other. That's all you have to do is listen to each other.
other because when they're listening, then there comes understanding. And if you don't even want to try to understand the other person, then I, of course, of course, everything that they say is not going to make sense. Duh. That's just like taking a, a geometry class. You listening to the teacher, but are you understanding the content? When the test is laid out on top of your desk, are you going to ace it? No, because you was only listening to the teacher. You weren't trying to understand him. Lisa and Molly are just keep butting heads and not trying to hear each other out and not trying to understand each other. Of course, that's not going to be no, it's going to be like that car scene, a mess, a hot mess. Issa was listening to some like self-help audio clip in her car and I, I like that because I do that all the time, like especially when I'm on my way somewhere where I don't want to be or if I'm like in my, in my mood, I'll listen to something that's like will help me like get up out of that or change my mind about stuff like so I like how Issa's been like really intentional about the stuff that she's trying to be around and listen to but she gotta take what she's listening to and actually put it to use she gotta actually do something with it like she can't just listen to Michelle Obama becoming she has to also be Michelle Obama becoming. We also get a small glimpse of Nathan trying to make a return with this weak voicemail. I mean, it was nice. It was cute. He's like, oh, the block party, da, da, da. But I really don't want Issa to go back to Nathan. I don't want her to go back to Lawrence. Because all that does is it just continues to create issues. But if, if in the same breath I'm saying I don't want her to go back to Nathan or Lawrence, I should be saying I don't want her to go back to Molly. Hmm. That's the question. I don't know. Oh, I hope Nathan don't make a comeback because he don't need to come around. You ghosted her. You made her go crazy. Well, he didn't make her go crazy, but he was one of the reasons why she went crazy. And I just don't want him to come back. I really don't. He can stay where he at. Wherever he is right now, he can stay there. Don't come around anymore. But her and Lawrence, that's weird. That's weird to me. That's just my honest opinion. Like, now we playing ping pong with Lawrence. Like, okay, Condola, your hit. Issa, your hit. Condola, your hit. Like, if, if Issa goes back to Lawrence, she can kiss her friendship with Condola goodbye. And I don't know if she cares about Condola enough to not want to go back with Lawrence, but I just think Lawrence, he needs to, he needs to go. He needs to go. Bring back Daniel. <laughs> like, bring back Daniel. <laughs> nah, don't bring back Daniel. Don't bring back none of these no good. Mm -hmm. But we get into, we get into Tiffany's house and they're all talking about this baby. And the baby's cute. And Tiffany look bad. Her lace front was like coming up on the side. Did y'all see when she had the baby in her hand like this? And the lace front was coming up. Ugh. Molly admires Tiffany and her relationship. Molly wants to have a relationship like Tiffany one day. And then Molly gets into saying, oh, you know, Andrew is this and that, this and that, this and that. When the camera cuts to Issa, she's making a face. And so Issa goes, and then she makes a joke like, oh, red table talk, Jada Pickett, ha, ha, ha. And it's just like, Molly like, that's not even funny. <laughs> like, that's not funny. And if they was cool, if nothing was going on between them, I'm sure everybody would have laughed at the joke. It would have been a funny joke to everybody. But because Issa and Molly have not had this conversation that they should have had a long time ago, shit ain't funny. Ain't nothing funny about your joke because we still haven't even said we still ain't even talked about what the issue is, and you trying to you try to still be funny with me. So I felt Molly right then and there. I would I wouldn't have laughed either. I would be like, Lisa, stop joking with her until you had this conversation. Like, let's be real. Let's be real about it. Stop stop trying to be funny. Stop trying to do this. Talk to the girl. Y'all need to talk about what's going on between y'all. Like, that's it. Friends, how many of us have them? Friends, a whole ones we can depend on. Friends, your friendship is still very stout. What's it?
salvageable, sal they can still salvage this relationship. It's so crazy. I think, like, honestly, their friendship can be so easily fixed if they just talk to each other. And I need Issa to stop dodging Molly. Stop dodging her, girl. Just have this conversation with her. Molly is ready to have a conversation. She's been practicing her communication. Can we give her one gold star? One, one red heart? Like, I think she's been practicing communicating because she's been doing better with Asian Bay. I think, yeah, she's been doing better with Asian Bay, and then she's also been doing better with the women at her job, which is, it was so nice to see that. And that dude that came in, I was like, who's that? Who's that? Who's, who's he for? Like, oh, he like Abigail's. I was like, <laughs> like, this show is so funny. Let's talk about the scene where Issa is going through her call log, trying to find people to replace Schoolboy Q for the headliner. Now, when she gets to Molly. And the only reason why she calls Molly is because she was is reminded that Nathan works for Live Nation. And I said this in my other review. So if you haven't checked out that review, go in and check it out because I've been exposed that. But when she calls Molly, Molly is like, looks at the phone and she's like, okay answers it and it sounds like Issa is ready to talk. Issa is ready to have this conversation and immediately like at a snap of a finger, I can't snap both, I can just snap this one, but at a snap of a finger, Molly just goes and starts talking about all her problems and saying what a crazy week it's been and da da da. And Issa gives her like this dry like, oh, that's crazy. That's crazy. Like, she didn't even try. Come on, Issa. That was real tacky. You know what I'm saying? Like, she just said that her week been crazy, and you giving her, like, this half concerned response, and then you lead up with what you need from her to do for you. But y'all haven't had no conversations. You ain't hear her up other than that. You just calling her when you need something. And when Molly was like, yeah, girl, I'll, I'll see what I, I'll see, I'll ask maybe. I don't know. Probably, probably not. Probably not going to ask Andrew. <laughs> what really threw me off was how, like, Issa was on the phone like, hey, best friend, my best friend, you're the best friend in the whole wide world. Like, she made a whole song on the phone. Just like, wait a minute, wait, wait, wait. Just. A few scenes ago, you was asking Kelly what's up with Molly. Like, has she been off? So you know that something is going on between you and Molly, but you still trying to play like everything is cool, everything is fine. Like, that's fake. Issa, stop being fake. Then Molly had hit Issa with the whole, I'm not going to ask Andrew. I prefer to keep those relationships separate. Issa was looking like egg all over her face. She had that look on her face of pure confusion and disappointment. But my thing is this. Listen, I'm just seeing, I'm just, ex I'm expressing what I see. My thing is this. Mommy brings up Andrew to Issa. And every single time Molly brings up Andrew to Issa, Issa has a comment to say about the relationship in a negative way. She's saying that Molly doesn't want to be happy. She's saying Molly is going back to the old Molly. So now it's just really weird that now Issa is calling Molly about needing Andrew. But anytime Molly would call Issa and need her to talk about uh, issue with Andrew, Issa will always like kind of be like, eh, get, get, get gone. But now she want to talk to Molly about Andrew and Molly like, eh, 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 get gone. They been going tip for tat with each other. That just brings me to my next point of like when Issa and her brother were in that Mexican restaurant talking about like just some of the things Issa's been going through and his, one of his advice was like, 
hey, you know, you don't have to always do stuff that everybody wants you to do. You can do the stuff that you want to do. You don't have to listen to what everybody else is doing. And Issa took that and she ran with it. And that made her not go to that meet up with Molly to eat the pie. Molly is using the brother's advice too in this situation, I feel. Um, she's like, I'm not going to do what I am supposed to do or what people expect me to do. I'm going to do what I want to do. Like, I feel like Issa cannot get mad at Molly for doing the same thing that she did to her with the whole pie situation. Of course, they're not like the same, but like emotionally, yeah. Like you didn't go to Molly's house and eat the pie because you don't want to, right? Molly's not gonna ask Andrew to help you with this block party because she don't want to. Issa can't get mad at Molly if she's doing the same stuff that Issa was doing to her. That's just my opinion. And right now I'm really not feeling anybody this season. Like I'm not on, I'm not a team this, I'm not team that. I'm just really observing because I feel like everybody wrong. Everybody wrong. I think the reason why Issa and Molly are really not having this conversation because they're gonna have to admit that they were wrong. My question to you guys is, who do you think is going to pop up at this block party? Like we got so many potentials. We got TSA back can pop up. Um, Lawrence can pop up. Nathan can pop up. Asian Bay might pop up. Condola, where is she? Is she gonna pop up? But at the, at the end of the day, at the end of the day, these two women need to have a conversation and stop being so shady to each other. Stop being so shady to each other. Stop doing it. But yeah, I think I think Issa and Molly gonna be okay. That was my review of episode four. What are you guys' predictions for uh, this block party? Do y'all think it's gonna be a blow up at the block party? And then also, how many episodes is in this season? Cause we're on episode four and the block party is the next episode. So this is it's still gonna go on. Like how many more episodes do we have? I'm excited. Thank y'all again for watching this review. I appreciate it. I really truly do. Make sure you leave a comment down below. Make sure you like the video and make sure you subscribe. And Sharon is definitely caring. Thank you once again for tuning in to Just Tefra. See you soon. Bye.